Today I'm going to show you how to restore an old photo inside Affinity Photo on the iPad. We're going to have a real swell time doing it, so let's get into it. Okay, so here we are inside Affinity Photo and this is a photo that I have simply just scanned in and it's a photo of my mum. It's a photo of my mum that she wanted touched up and I thought what a great opportunity to do a lesson on this on Affinity Photo 2 just to show you how I would touch up this photo and it's for mum so I best make a good job of it. <laughs> so as you can see, it's just been scanned in. Here's some of the paper behind it. There's a bit of a shadow, a bit of a rip here and a bit of a wrinkle and we'll maybe do something with the color too so this will be good fun so the first thing i'm going to do is go into the layers and i'm going to add a new pixel layer so now we've got the background layer and just because i want to tidy it up a wee bit and maybe start naming things if you watch my other tutorials you know i'm not the best at naming so we'll click on the layer the three dots and we'll cl click on background and we'll simply call this photo mum or this layer mum. And then this pixel layer is where we're going to do all our touch ups. So we'll click on the mum layer. First thing we're going to do is, is, is crop it in simply just by clicking crop on the left hand side. There's the contextual menu that comes up at the bottom and I'm not really going to bother with that too much apart from maybe hitting apply just because I'll click this top wee square and bring it down and I'm just going to cut out a bit of this paper and a little bit of the photo because this photo was taken on a scanner the photo's not warped if you're restoring old photos and you're taking it with your iPad or your your camera it could be a bit of a slant and uh, we might have to use or you might have to use some perspective to get things straight but seeing this was used in a flatbed scanner it's completely flat completely straight even though the edges don't look at it, it was probably the way it, it was cut so that looks okay so i'm not going to worry about this contextual menu i'm simply going to hit apply now that i've got what i think is a nice crop i'm simply going to hit apply and straight away it's cropped it in and it's looking really really well now i want to have a look at this rip and then i'll maybe look into the color and doing a few other wee things so we've uh, got our mum layer i made a pixel layer which up to now well, i haven't done anything with i'm going to click on pixel layer now then i'm going to come down to the clone brush tool but i don't want the clone brush tool if i hold it for just a second i want the in painting brush and the in painting brush we looked at it a good few videos ago now and it's, it's a bit of a magic brush really where it will fix up the photos and uh, we'll look we'll look at it now it's a bit like the content aware brush in photoshop if you use photoshop i'm going to go down to the source layer at the minute if i use this tool it will only look at the source layer which is the pixel layer so really it, it won't it won't do anything because there's nothing in that pixel layer. If I click on the mum layer, if I just increase the brush size, if I just do a quick bit here, it just takes a wee second longer. It's done an okay job, but we're going to neaten that up. This is just for an example to show you that now the mum layer, that effect, that change has been made on the mum layer. And that's not what we want. So if we just two fingers, two fingers to undo. If I click in the pixel layer, now what I want to happen is any changes I make to this photo, I want it to appear on this pixel layer, not the mum layer. For that to happen, I go down to the source, current layer, current layer and below. Now, if I do the same wee thing, It's going to make that change on the pixel layer and you can see it there. If I can hide the pixel layer and the layer below, the mum layer, still has that there rip in it. So really, why would I do that and why would I not just make it on the mum layer? Well, just in case any stage I go a bit far and I maybe make a mistake or I'm not liking the way things look, look at, instead of it being fixed on the mum layer, all in one layer, I can go back to the pixel layer and either hide it or maybe rub 
a bit out like this. If I increase my brush size, I can just rub that out and I can go again now. So hopefully you follow along with that. Again, just to recap, we've got the mum layer, which is the original photo. We've got the pixel layer. By clicking on this in painting brush, all our changes are going to be made on this pixel layer. So the mum layer, the layer below, the photo layer can stay intact. So I'm going to try to, I'll zoom up here nice and big and I'll try and get the brush not too big, fairly close to the size of this rip. And normally I bring the hardness to very soft. For this, I'm going to bring it up to 50 and I might even be tempted to bring it up to, to 75. No, maybe just 50. And that visually shows you what's happening. It's just, it's feathering the edges just, just, just a wee bit. So I'll maybe bring the brush size down just a wee bit. And I don't want to go mad with it. I just really want to try to get this rip. It takes a few seconds and wow, in painting brush does it again. Absolutely fantastic. And this is this is an awful lot of fun. If you have old photos, it's it's just magic. Absolutely on well, it didn't do just as good a job that time. We'll go back because it's taking some of the hair layer there. So I'll maybe just work on this wee rip. Just so we're staying away from the hair layer. And again, if we go back into our layers, you can see on this layer, our changes are being made and the layer below is staying intact. What we do is try to get a wee bit closer to this, but not touch the hair. Yep, that's a wee bit better. Now, if I go into this and touch the hair, hopefully this will look a wee bit better. And it does. That's a really, really nice job. And seeing it's an old photo, seeing it's a wee bit blurry, that comes out well. And again, I'm just going to do some of the hair. And I don't want to go mad. I want to stay quite close when I'm using the painting brush. There's even wee spots. I'm not sure if that was there or not before. That's the nice thing. I can actually look back and see, yep, that was a rip. So there's something about that just looks a wee bit unnatural. Maybe bring the brush size up just a wee bit. And that's a that's a nicer that's a nicer job now. I'll maybe just go over this bit again. I'll maybe select a bigger area to see what happens. Nope, I don't like that. I'll maybe go back a few times. Again, two fingers to undo, three to redo. It's just this wee spot. There's, I'm being very picky now. I think that looks better. Yeah, that, that, that looks okay. Or is it? Oh, I'm being picky, Andrew. I'm being picky. I just want to... Uh, that wee dot's just... Yeah, that's much better. It was just doing my head that, that wee bit. No one would probably ever notice but me, but that's okay. Again, just making this wee rip hopefully go away. A lot of, lot of fun, this in painting brush. And there's even wee bits of dust here, as we can just remove. And we'll see if we can get this line all in one go. I'm not sure how it'll turn out. Let's give it a go. Wow. Wow. That's really, really nice. And seeing this background is a bit of a stone background or maybe a hedge. I think it's a building maybe. Uh, seeing it's that kind of texture. We don't really notice too much, but I'm going to be quite picky. I want to want to do the best job I can. Any we Oops. That was just a mistake. So two fingers to... Two fingers to undo, two fingers to move around the canvas. And I'm just looking at the background at the minute. Again, just a few wee dust marks and you could, you could spend all day working on these wee things 
and spotting more and more. And sometimes you start to wonder, are these imperfections or is it dirt on my iPad? <laughs> and you just go over it anyway. There's a few wee bits here. And again, I'm nearly not taking time just to review those bits because it's taken so so long. So you can see how easy it is. There's a there's a wee mark here, so I'll maybe bring it down just a wee bit. Undo. I'll maybe try and do this one first. Yep, that's better now. Okay. And zooming out, is that nearly us? Oh, there's a wee bit here at the forehead. Really, really super job. So let me just zoom out and do the hand tool. So look at that. That is brilliant. I'm just going to touch a wee bit here. I don't think this is actually a mistake, but... I just, <laughs> my eye was drawn to it, so I just wanted to take it away. So now if we go to this pixel pixel layer, look at that, before and after, before and after. And that really didn't take too long just to make those changes. That I'm really, really impressed with. As always with the paint and brush, I'm really, really impressed. And I'll maybe just rename this pixel layer to, oh, what we'll call just... Fixes. It's not a great name, but it'll do. So now that the photo's looking really well, I'm really happy how it's looking. We've moved all the the rips and wee blemishes. I'm going to go into the adjustment studio, and we haven't looked at the adjustment studio too much in any of my tutorials, but that's going to soon change. The nice thing about the adjustment studio is it gives the name, but it also gives a slight a slight thumbnail, a slight preview of what's happening or what could happen by choosing these thumbnails. Now, you might be wondering why the photo is pointing that way and I have the photo this way. It's because when I am imported this photo, just before I start this tutorial, uh, the photo is the opposite way around and I rotated it. So that's probably why it's coming or it's looking like that. So we're going to hit levels. And again, the contextual menu comes down here. So with the black, I'm just going to darken. I'm going to darken about 10% and then I'm going to click on the white. And I'm going to see if I can just bring up the white values. I bring them down even. Let me just see ever so slightly. And if we go into our layers, by adding that adjustment, we've got a new layer at the very top. And we'll go into adjustment layers on another video, but whatever is below this, this adjustment layer, this adjustment layer affects these layers. So these two layers is affected by this top layer. And just by turn it on and off, you can see, it maybe didn't look much at the time, but the image is just popping ever so slightly. The blacks are blacker, the whites are whiter, and that's looking really nice. I'm going to go back into the adjustment studio, and now I'm going to go into brightness and contrast. So I'll bring the contrast up just ever so slightly. Again, I'm just moving my finger left and right, just getting to a place where I think it's quite nice. And again, if we go to our layer studio, we can see ever so slightly what that's doing. We're going back into our adjustments again. We're going down to 8SL and that stands for Hue, Saturation and Lightness. So we'll click that in. And the reason I'm going into that is because if I click on ranges here, and if I bring the saturation right down, that's now making this photo completely black and white. Although it didn't look at, like it, there's a slight yellow tinge. If I bring, if I bring the saturation up, you can see where the yellow is. Uh, when it's in the middle, you don't really notice it, but by bringing it down, you do notice it. So I'm just bringing that all the way down. And again, if we just go to before and after, you can actually see just that yellow has now been taken out of the photo. And that yellow could have, could have came through time or through just being faded. Now that's completely black and white photo. If you do like, a wee bit of a wee bit of color into it 
we'll go back into the adjustment studio and we're going to go down to a lens filter. The lens filter here, and you can nearly see what this is going to do. It nearly puts back, or it does put back, that orange colour. And you can make this as much or as little as you want. There's two fingers to go back to the default, and that's 50%. We'll turn it on and off, and it's really, it's really just personal preference. Do you like it pure black and white or do you like that wee bit of a lens filter? And in this occasion, I like the wee bit of colour. So by going into the History Studio, scroll all the way to the top. That's what we started with. Scroll all the way to the bottom. That's what we ended with. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. And if you've any old photos lying about the house, or if your mum is like my mum and has old photos lying about the house, it's a great excuse to get them, scan them in, or take a photograph of them and try your hand at restoring the photos. I have a few more photos left to do, and a few of them's very challenging indeed. If you'd like me to record that process of these photos, please feel free to comment below and say, Andrew, we'd like to watch you do them too. And I'll maybe make a few videos of a few more photos being restored. And as always, please like this video if you found any value in it or enjoyed it or learned something. And feel free to subscribe as there's more videos coming out each and every week. Two, sometimes three, depending on how busy I am. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.